Thanks for joining me for the second session on the DC architectures. In the first session, we discussed IP fabrics becoming the de facto standard in many tier two cloud providers and telco clouds and BGP unnumbered specified in RFC 5549 becoming increasingly popular in the data center IP fabric ecosystem. We also compared BGP unnumbered with eBGP and discussed how it's easier to enable than the IGPs. Today, I'd like to pivot our discussion to the storage fabrics. As we all know, in today's world of ever increasing data, the speed at which this, the, this data gets transferred quickly and reliably is critical to the effective use of the information. Interconnect based on remote direct memory access or RDMA uh, offers the ideal option for boosting data center efficiency, reducing overall complexity and increasing data delivery performance. I have the pleasure of chatting with Michael here again uh, to shed more light on the technologies used in the data centers. Michael, thanks for joining me once again. Hi, Aaron. Thanks for the invitation. Hi, everybody. So, Michael, the first question I have for you is, uh, we recently inter in introduced uh, remote direct memory access or overconverged Ethernet version 2 or Rocky V2 as we call it. Uh, so with this, are we proposing new type of architecture for the data centers? So Aaron, as a matter of fact, in case of Rocky V2 uh, version 2 of the standard, we can use uh, uh, the IP fabrics three stage, five stage architecture, same as for any compute node traffic, right? Um, the, the thing that is specific for Rocky V2 is that uh, we need to make sure that the IP fabric infrastructure is not introducing any uh, uh, situations where the storage traffics are lost, right, in the middle of the fabric. So on top of the three stage, five stage type of architectures, we're adding specific uh, capabilities on our switches in order to make sure that the traffic is always delivered without any frame loss and is delivered at the very low latency, right? So outside of the uh, traditional architectures with three stage, five stage, it, it, it's worth to mention that uh, in case of Rocky V2, these architectures are just making perfect sense because uh, the, the volumes of data inside the data center ecosystem are just growing, right? Sure. They're growing every month, right? So in case of uh, 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 an IP fabric architecture, we, we can just increase uh, uh, the um, the bandwidth uh, of the fabric in much easier way comparing to uh, to the traditional architectures. And then last point regarding Rocky V2 type of architectures outside of the uh, uh, three stage, five stage IP fabric architectures is, is just the back-to-back -back collapsed use case where Rocky V2 is just running from the smart sneak to the top of the rack. And then when needed to communicate with any other uh, smart sneak, it just uses the back-to-back -back link, right? So for smaller, very small infrastructures, for example, in case of edge computing, we can just uh, use two nodes and then connect back-to-back -back and run the uh, Rocky V2 uh, specific features between the two switches and obviously have the Rocky V2 stack on the smart mix, right? So we are pretty much consistent with the industry standards for IP class fabrics, but additionally, we have these uh, you know, smaller use cases with collapse uh, spines. Awesome, awesome. This is this is this is great. Uh, uh, the other question I have is: uh, so, can Rocky V two coexist with the other type of flows that are not RDMA? Exactly. So, on on these three stage, five stage, or collapsed architectures, we can run a regular uh, um, compute traffic right to our customers, right? So, if the customer is needs some type of traffic, it, it can still access the same infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing is that we need to make sure that uh, the, the, the Rocky V2, the RDMA traffic, gets some uh, privilege comparing to the other type of traffic, which mm -hmm. potentially uses the TCP, right? In case of Rocky V2, we use UDP. And so we need to make sure that this traffic is always uh, correctly uh, leveraged on the IP fabric, right? So, uh, so from what I understand then, Michael, the infinity band inside the Rocky V2 frame is behind the UDP. So this traffic should be taken as a regular traffic for IP fabric. Um, but are there any other benefits that the uh, Juniper QFX5220 switches offer uh, 
specific to Rocky V2? Yeah, good point, Aaron. So as a matter of fact, outside of the performances, right, of the of the 50 to 20s, right, in terms of low latency, very important to, to make sure that we are writing uh, very fast uh, on the remote uh, end host. Mm -hmm. uh, we add two uh, principal ingredients that are uh, uh, defined in the Annex 17 of the standard, uh, which are the explicit congestion notification and priority flow control on the IP DSCP, right? So when it comes to the explicit congestion notification, the switch, such as the 50 to 20 you mentioned, can actually send, uh, continue to send these Rocky V2 frames and inform the, the destination host, uh, NIC card, that there are some congestions, right? In case there are some congestions, obviously. And so it means that the end host that receives the traffic, right, will take an action and will send back the information to the originator of the traffic which mm -hmm. is another uh, smart NIC card on the server. Mm -hmm. And so it means that the originator will get the information about the congestion and will just slow down a little bit to, to reduce the rates that, are, that were initially used uh, in order to write, uh, for example, some data uh, directly on the memory of the server, right? And then second mechanism is, is uh, the uh, priority flow control. So comparing to the uh, legacy priority flow control, which was used entirely on the L2, right? On the on the uh, dot one P uh, from the uh, cost point of view. In case of uh, Rocky V2, we are actually using priority flow control on IP DSCP. So these two mechanisms: uh, first, the explicit congestion notification, and then the second one, which uh, actually acts on every segment of the architecture. Uh, are two uh, important features in order to make sure that the different type of traffic could exist and we always give the priority to the to the RDMA traffic uh, in order to write properly the data or read properly the data from the server. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for very interesting discussion on Rocky V2. It sure has the has been a phenomenal session for me. I've been learning a lot and I'm sure our viewers too are uh, too. So uh, for all the viewers, uh, please stay tuned for our next video. Thank you.